Today, we're gonna turn this cute little dancing bear into the stuff of nightmares. Five Nights at Freddy's, easily one of the scariest game series ever made. It's all about these super creepy animatronics that come to life at night and do all kinds of terrible things. The tension and anxiety you feel when you play these games is unreal. What started as a pretty simple indie game has turned into like this huge series with millions of fans all over the world, us included. Last week, somebody gave us this dancing bear as a joke gift and challenged us to transform it into something awesome. You know, because it's an animal-tronic. Animal shark, get it? <laughs> yes, I get it. It's a bear, so we thought, okay, are there any good scary bear characters out there? And yeah, there's a ton. But of course, the creepiest bear of all, Freddy Fazbear from Five Nights at Freddy's. There are a lot of different versions of Freddy across all the games, but we decided to go with the withered version from the second game. Withered Freddy is classic, but also he's got a bunch of like broken parts and wires sticking out, stuff like that. So it'll be really fun and interesting to build. And we get to make him dance, which is great. <laughs> Here we go, this is the moment. It's gonna be fine. Our first step though, is we take off his skin. <laughs> Does he come apart at all? No, we have to cut him. <laughs> he must be cut. <laughs> It kind of feels like there's like a skeleton inside. It does, there's there's wires. You know, I've seen people like take Furbies apart before, like take the, the skin off and they always look really, really creepy. So I'm excited to do this. <laughs> oh, oh, hello. Is that his neck? Yeah. Oh, so it's his, on a spring. So his head can do a little jiggle jiggle. We can work with this. Yeah. And we'll leave the shoes on for now. That way it'll stand up, but we can replace them with some furry paws later. Oh, there's a battery compartment in the back. Wait. There are no batteries in the battery compartment, but he dances still. Does he? Haunted, definitely haunted. Is it? <laughs> we didn't even make the scary thing yet and it's already haunted. <laughs> How is Are that there working? batteries in, like, I mean, there's batteries somewhere. Okay, that's super weird. <laughs> okay, wait, hold on, look. Oh, wait, there's more batteries in his shoes. There's two other battery compartments. <laughs> okay, mystery solved. But still, why have this third battery compartment? <laughs> I don't know, maybe it was extra. How do we make his body now? I have no idea. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> I have no idea how we're gonna do it. There's so many parts and pieces and what? Is this craziness? Craziness? You want to talk craziness? Look, this Freddy guy, I got pictures, I got colors. Is he brown? Is he golden? Is he green? And what is this, Glamrock Freddy? I got boxes of Freddy. And don't even get me started on the timeline of this. It makes no sense. There's got to be a better way to organize all this stuff. We can't work like this. Do you ever feel like you're in over your head when it comes to organizing your creative projects? Are you tired of sifting through a sea of sticky notes and endless browser tabs? Well, fear not, because today's sponsor, Milanote, is here to save the day. Milanote is a digital tool for organizing your creative projects. With Milanote, you can collect notes, reference images, plan your tasks, and more, all in one place. There's over 100 built-in templates for designers, photographers, illustrators, you know, creative people. Plus, you can share your ideas and work with your team in just minutes on a computer or on the app. The best part for me is all the visual stuff. I like to see all the things, and being able to organize it in any way you want, drag stuff around. You can even draw notes directly on the canvas, which is awesome. We use it all the time on almost all of our projects. You can organize it in a way that works best for you and make sense of those crazy projects. Milano is free with no time limit. So if you're interested, you should definitely give it a try. Sign up with the link in the description and start your next creative project. Do we finally have a plan here? Let's do this. I think we have a plan. We found a model of Freddy. He's in a T-pose and we printed him out to match the scale of this guy. And if you look at him, he's got all these little individual segments of body and it's over like an endoskeleton. I think what we're gonna do is make these little individual body parts out of upholstery foam. Upholstery foam is basically the same stuff that they make couch cushions out of. First step, we're gonna cut out all of our pieces so we can trace them onto the foam. I think I'm gonna cut out the belly, like the middle part of it as a separate piece because I think I want this part to just be like a super thin covering. And then we'll like smack the belly right on top. Smack that belly. Smack the belly. <laughs> Throughout the course of our project, having all these little scale pieces is going to be super helpful. 
Okay, I meant slap the belly on, not smack the belly on. But like, when you think about it, is there a huge difference between slap and smack? It's kind of the same thing. The old slap smack. Words. <laughs> so next step, we're gonna trace these on the foam, right? But yes. not, we're not making the head out of foam. I don't think so. I don't know, that's gonna be hard to sculpt with this type of foam. Yeah, cause we gotta do the eyes and the hat and like the jaw and stuff. So eh, we'll cross that bridge later. We'll smack that bridge a little later on. We got all our front views cut out, but his legs are actually like this three-dimensional shape. So to get us closer to that, we're gonna cut out a side view. So for example, this is a leg piece. So we'll take our side view, put it on the side of the leg piece, trace that out, and that'll get us a lot closer to what the actual shape's gonna be. While Jamie's working on the foam, I'm gonna get started on some of the other pieces. Now, since Freddy's a game character, we can actually open up his 3D model. It's great because we can check some of his proportions and that kind of thing, but it also means we can 3D print some of these pieces because they're already modeled. For the more complex parts like his hands and hat and head and stuff, this is gonna work great, but we actually wanna pose him out first before we print it. I want his hands to look a little more natural so I can kind of rotate the fingers into a good looking pose. And then this hand's gonna be holding the microphone so we kind of need like a fist type thing. I also modeled a new microphone with a bit more detail because we wanna paint it and make it look awesome. All right, so once all that stuff's ready, we can load the parts into our 3D printing app. And these are gonna take a few hours to print, so I'm gonna get these going and we'll come back and check them out when they're done. I've got all my leg and arm pieces and the belly roughed out, and now it's time to take them to their final shape. To do that, I'm gonna use two tools. The first one of those is the Dremel, and it's got like this rough sanding bit on it. <laughs> okay, this bit will take your piece and throw it in the air, so make sure you have a tight grip on that, and also go really slow. <laughs> The other thing we're using the Dremel for is we've got this round bit and we're using it to hollow out the ends and that gives us the illusion that these are hollow pieces. The second thing we're using is this stuff. It's basically like sandpaper. If your sandpaper were made of a thin cheese grater metal type material. It's really great for doing the finishing work on foam because we just have a lot more control over it. The shaping worked really well, but you know, as is tradition, now that we've got it looking really good, we have to mess it up again. First we create, and then we destroy. <laughs> because it's withered Freddy, so we need to wither him. So we got some reference, and he's got a bunch of holes in him. He's got some holes here, here, here. We're gonna cut those in there as best we can, and make him withered. <laughs> Freddy has like, you know, bear paws and not giant boots. So we're gonna take these apart and see what we can do, even though they have batteries in them. Oh shoot, I broke one of the wires. <laughs> Whoops. It's okay, we'll fix it. It's like a lower part. So can we just take this whole top part off? I think, yes. Although the legs connect to the, the top part. The legs connect to this, but if we could like glue them onto this, Reconnect the leg to the lower part? Yeah. And then how are you gonna make the foot? We'll sculpt it. So with the top part of the shoe off, we're gonna epoxy his leg back onto the bottom piece of this using 500 epoxy. Once the epoxy was dry, I re-soldered the wires that I broke and then covered them in hot glue to protect them so that I wouldn't break them again. I'm gonna use epoxy sculpt to sculpt his feet. It dries quick, it's easy to work with, so it should be good. Well, that's a big foot there, but it's a big base to sculpt on, so it's gotta be a big foot, and it's okay. He can have comically large feet. They're a little fuzzy and cute. I'm very happy with them. 
So we gotta let it dry. I think it takes about 24 hours, so tomorrow we can paint them. They're, they're ridiculous, but they're great. They're giant, <laughs> they're giant clown. Why is every project we do have giant feet? It's an animatronic staple. Yeah. Okay, next I think we should do the legs, and I actually wanna get them on there. So I think we need to slice them, like up the back, make our holes there, and like put them on the legs. So you're just gonna do a slice down the back and then? Yeah, maybe let's cut like a little bit of a square in the middle of here so it fits this. Okay. I'm gonna try and do clean cuts because we wanna like re-glue them back together. Ready? Watch this. You see how the legs, they deform as this thing squishes down? And if we had just 3D printed the whole thing, we'd never be able to get that cool effect. This is gonna look awesome. I'm gonna paint like his endoskeleton, kind of like a silvery, you know, a shiny, a shiny metal color. Metal color. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and base coat these brown. You know what I worry about? Like what if we get him together and he does not squish and like doesn't dance? You mean what if we build the whole project and it doesn't work? Yeah, that that's what that's I That's what we worry about on every project. Well, yeah. It'll be fine. The broken parts in the ends of each piece got painted black and luckily we had a little bit of help on this part. <laughs> I'm a little working baker. We got all the legs and arms painted, but before I paint the belly, we need to slap the belly on. So that way I can paint the belly and the body as one. We also have a pelvis piece that I'm gonna glue on right there. Okay, the 3D prints are done and they came out good. We gotta do a little bit of cleanup on some of these pieces to get them ready for painting, but this is a great start. One of the reasons I wanted to 3D print these parts is because they're super lightweight plastic, which is exactly what we need. If we had made them out of something heavier like clay, it adds a lot of weight to the actual animatronic and slows it down. When you're working with mechanical stuff, lightweight equals good. One of the things to assemble are his eyeballs. I modeled and 3D printed the white parts, but to make the irises, we're gonna start by printing out Freddy's eye texture and then gluing it onto the back of a clear cabochon. Once we cut it out, we glue it into this little space and bam, perfect Freddy eyeballs. We're working our way up and it's time to start putting the head together, but once we actually did a test, we realized it's too small, look. Once we got the giant feet and the big belt, like his head is just way too small. Also, you may have noticed that this is actually the wrong head model for Withered Freddy. At first we did that on purpose because I thought the proportions would be better for this animatronic body, but I don't know, it just doesn't look that good. So we re 3D printed everything, made a new head that's bigger, it's the right model for Withered Freddy, and now we can start working on it. That also means we have an extra head and we're gonna give it away later in the video, so stay tuned for that. I like it. Yeah, I think the head is more proportional to the body now. But the body itself, I gotta tell you, like, as we've started to put this thing together, I think we kind of messed up the proportion. He's too, you know. Sh short. He's too short. And I'm not sure what to do. Okay, okay. What if, what if we break his legs? And then, like, lengthen them? <laughs> like, really? Yeah. We're gonna have to resolder the wires, but we could cut them apart at the knees and, like, put a little leg extender in there. Because they don't move, they're just, they don't. That would probably work. I say we try. I think that's a cool idea. Okay. Remember that thing about working hard on something and then destroying it? It's... <laughs> uh, okay. I got his little legs cleaned up and we 3D printed some tiny little extender, leg extender, stilts. We made him some stilts. And we added like a little kneecap and made him gray. So they're kind of gonna look like his little endoskeleton inside his legs. On the leg itself, there's like this little channel and basically they fit right in there. So I'm gonna super glue him in and if all goes well, he'll be an inch taller in a minute.
Check this out. I'm so glad we did that. It looks a hundred times better. We fixed all the wires and glued the leg pieces on and now it's starting to finally look normal. The other thing we did is put the head together, but we immediately realized it's too small. Now that the proportions of the body are starting to work right, the, it's just doesn't, it's too small. So we have another one of these to give away. We also had to 3D print yet another one. I think this is like the fifth one we've printed. But we're really happy with the size now. We repainted it to kind of get back to where we were before. And everything's almost ready to put together, but we have to give it fur. So we're gonna do some flocking on all of these 3D printed parts. Flocking something is basically like adding glitter to something. You put your glue on and then you shake your fibers on. For this one, we're not using an electrostatic flocker because we don't need the fibers to stand up on end like if it were grass or something. So we're just gonna use a little mini flocker. And our objective is just to make him look furry and to make the texture kind of match that of the foam. The glue we're using here is Mod Podge and you just put the glue where you want the flock to be. This glue dries really fast, so for this face, I'm gonna do really small sections. The body is pretty much the same thing. I'm hoping that I don't get too much flock inside the mechanism, so I'm just gonna try and avoid the holes there. That turned out great. He's actually like fuzzy now, and it really like ties it all together. Super happy with that. Now, I gave it a light airbrushing to match the color, and now it is time to do his little armies. So for the arms, I took the hands that we just made and I epoxied in a new piece of wire because we're gonna replace the ones that are already on there. These are a little too short, unfortunately, but should be easy to replace. Next, we're gonna bend these arms into their position, which should be pretty easy. Something like that? I don't know, we can adjust them after. His little shoulder pads that go right here are 3D printed, but on the bottom, Jamie had this really good idea to use a roofing nail and just cut off the tip, and that's gonna basically allow us to put it right there. And voila, we have arms. All right, it's time for the head. We've got all our pieces here to put the head together. We've got the head itself, the eyeballs with the eyelids. We've got a little interior endoskeleton with like a extra jaw that goes inside his mouth. All of this has to get put together and somehow attached to his head. So let's do it. I'm hot gluing most of the pieces together so that if I mess something up, I can try again. Luckily, this is the third time I've done this, so we had some practice, but if we do things in the wrong order, it won't go together. To attach the eyeballs to the inner head, we used some little pieces of wire and hot glued them on. After that, we used glue to attach the jaw to the main head, which holds everything together. This was tricky because we had to make sure that the eyes were in the exact right spot, but it worked really well. To make the hinge for the lower jaw, we're just using a piece of ribbon and hot gluing it to each side. <laughs> Finally, we glued a tiny spring into the mouth to try to add a little bit of secondary motion. I wasn't sure if this was going to work or not, but the plan came together. I worked. But the whole time, I didn't think it was gonna work or wasn't sure, and it totally works. It worked great. Look at him. That's so <laughs> cool. <laughs> so it kind of makes it look like the jaw is floating and kind of naturally there, and it will, as it bounces around, it will close a little bit, it will open a little. Yes. That's gonna look so disturbing when he's dancing. I know. I'm so excited. Okay, time to put the head on. So we took this spring off because we didn't want it to like go crazy and wobble everywhere, and 3D printed this other little part, which should fit. Let's test this. And now we should be able to just slide that right on. There's our boy. This little piece of fabric at the top is going to make it so that it sticks to the neck, but also just has a little bit of flex, which will allow the head to move around a little.
Now that he's finally all put together, it's time to weather him, or wither him. The model has all of this really beautiful color variation that makes it look like he's just, he's been in the world a while. He's dirty, he's gross. So we're gonna add some washes of browns and blacks and kind of bring some of that weathering, that agedness to him. I'm also gonna bring back in some of that yellow for his belly and his little nose there that we lost when we did the flocking. To make his little elbow, we're actually using a drywall anchor that we painted silver and split apart. Before we see him dance, we just want to say thank you for watching. We had a lot of fun on this project, and you know, I learned that these small toys are basically the same thing as the big animatronics that we do. But smaller. It's just scaled down, like it's just a motor that moves some stuff and plastic parts with something on top. It's really interesting. And if you want to see more of these toy makeovers, let us know in the comments because we had a lot of fun doing this and we'd like to do more. This week's wicked shout out goes to Finn from New York. He's four years old and he told his mom that he wants to be a wicked maker when he grows up, which is awesome. <laughs> That's a worthy goal, Finn, and we'll help you every step of the way. We also have two giveaways in this video, so if you're a FNAF fan and you really like Freddy, let us know in the comments and we'll pick two people to send each of these extra heads to. As always, thank you for watching and until next time, stay wicked. Don't see me as a big teddy bear now, do ya? <laughs> <laughs> Don't you worry, we can find a suit that's just perfect for you. Welcome to the Fazbear family, where you'll never be alone again. <laughs>